my lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to episode 39 of the Deluxe DLC Transport Fever 2 series. Today's episode starts off on the mountainside, just overlooking the growing city of Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls was the centre of attention for us in the previous episode when we set up a cargo line via the rail network that brings in machinery into this city for consumption and growth stimulation. We're going to continue focusing on Sioux Falls for a bit today and maybe even the next episode or two. And the next thing I'd like to do is start supplying some of the other cargo demands that Sioux Falls has. Initially we did see in the previous episode that as well as the machinery, Sioux Falls also had a demand for goods. Now in the time that's lapsed between the previous episode and starting recording for this one, Sioux Falls has now demanded an extra two commodities, food and fuel. However, as we know, your additional commodities, their initial demand starts off pretty low. I think the food is seven per year and the fuel is roughly similar if I remember. I'd have to check the numbers when we bring the UI up. But of course, the goods, which is one of the initial primary goods or commodities that the city was asking for, there is a much higher demand and it's something hopefully we'll be able to make a nice bit of money from when we start delivering it. I've had a quick look around the network. Uh, we have two options for bringing in the goods. We have a goods factory over by the small town of Irving in the northwest of the map. And we'll have one down by Clearwater on the southern par uh, portion of our map. I'm initially leaning towards supplying Sioux Falls from the factory at Irving and that is only supplying one city, the city of, I believe it's Knoxville. So that industry has the capacity to serve more cities. What I'm also thinking about doing is, I think for the first time in any of the playthroughs, I might be wrong, but I'm leaning towards using air freight as a means of transporting the goods from Irving over here to Sioux Falls. I don't know if it'll make us that much money. Obviously, running an aircraft is quite expensive. However, it does mean our goods are much more direct and we're not having to impact our existing rail network, which is quite a busy network as things stand. So it might make sense for us to explore some air freight. So let's bring up the user interface before we do anything else and we can see the state of affairs. So as I said, here is Sioux Falls, and let's just pan the camera around so we're facing northwards. So the machinery we are taking care of only hit about 50%. As we can see, we have a good demand for goods as well. The fuel and the food, less so. Now, when it comes to the food, very simply, we would just use this food processing plant here on the outskirts of Sioux Falls and just have a couple of trucks bringing it in. Wouldn't need that many, they only need 17 tons per year. Fuel would be a different kettle of fish, and we might not even bother doing the fuel anyway. But the goods, we definitely want to dip our toes into that market and see if we can make a bit of profit on it. So as I said, we have a factory over here towards Irving that produces our goods. And if you look at the consumer screen, it is only supplying one city, Knoxville, 87 tonnes per year. We have decent supplies as we can see, over 100 units of plastic and we have 1,592 units of steel. So there is scope and there is capacity for this industry to also supply Sioux Falls. Now as I mentioned a few moments ago, having a freight airfield over here would be something a little bit different and I think it's worthwhile exploring whether it's going to be viable. Now as always with airfields you do have to be very careful of orientation when you have cliffs and mesas because as we can see if we were to pop it there it would do all sorts of nasty things to 
that mesa that we have just to the north of this industry. So this we have to be a little bit tactical when it comes to placing this. If we'd put it say there for instance we would have that connection but we are scalping the landscape something we'd ideally look to avoid. So I think if we had it this way around and put in a dedicated road system that reaches the airport terminal building I think that would be enough to give us a connection to the industry and looking in the nearby vicinity we're not impacting the terrain at all if we were to build it up here. So let's go ahead and commit to that and we'll have the cargo airfield right there. Now did I just put a small one down or a large? Yes, yeah, small cargo aircraft. I think I prefer to go for a large. That way if we do make money off this and we want to have large aircraft service in this route, we're able to do so. But obviously this now has a considerably larger footprint because it's a larger airfield. So finding that space is a little bit more difficult, but we've managed to do it. It has created some odd terrain effects in and around here as we can see, so I think what we'll have to do is level off this area here and then see if we can't just smooth it in closer to the road like this. And let's run along there as well. How does it look over this side? That's, that's not too bad at all. And what we need to do now is provide road access to the terminal building, which is this building here, like that. And can we bring up a nice connection there? Yes, we can. Let's just have it as default like that. And then, yep, we have a connection. So we don't need any intervening steps such as a truck delivery shunting from the industry to the airfield. I wonder if it has a connection to the rail port. No it doesn't, so the, the rail port, sorry, the rail station does not connect, it is too far away. Well that shouldn't be an issue because we only want this to be interested in the goods factory itself. So we'll pop that there. Now we need to do some something, uh, something similar near Sioux Falls and again we're going to have to be mindful as to the orientation of this airfield because we don't want it to be chopping into hillsides like it would do if we were to put it there. Not that we would but just as a demonstration. So I think I think we could put it somewhere like Mm, just looking at the terrain here. I think if we popped it there, it's got a good approach. It might be a bit close to that cliff on takeoff, but we'll have to inspect that when we start the aircraft running the line or running the, uh, the route. We still need that road connection. Now it looks like the terminal building is quite elevated. But I think we should be able to blend it in and make it look okay. Yeah, that's pretty nice actually. We can live with that. So if we had our airfield there, we have a, a very small amount of coverage here, but we're not interested in that. What we are interested in is finding where we need to put our unload point. So it's going to be on the, so uh, the south side of the city. So I think if we were to pop the drop off point there, some more Alco PAs, 170 miles per hour, these ones, so we might want to look at upgrading some of our trucks, uh, sorry, some of our locomotives there. And we have the Isuzu trucks as well at 50 miles per hour, but I'm not sure about the capacity on those. More Alcos, well, one more Alco. So if we were to do that, back to what we were initially trying to get done here. Place the truck station at the corner here, so we have somewhere for the cargo to be dropped off and transferred over to. 
What I'd like to do is extend the platform sizes a little like this. And given the full a full aircraft might swamp these platforms in terms of their holding capacity, we'll put down a few buildings as well as buffers, a few warehouses if you will. Now we'll head back over to Irving, which is here, here we are. We don't need a truck station here because we've got that direct connection. So what we can do now is set up a new line from the cargo airport over at Irving to the cargo airport over here in Sioux Falls, like that. Colour scheme doesn't really matter. Do we want these aircraft to be fully loaded? I think we, uh, I think we will. And to start with, we'll just use one aircraft. And if one aircraft isn't able to keep up with the demand at Sioux Falls, then we could look at adding extra aircraft in to late to point. But for now, we'll start with one. Just turn that visibility icon off there. We'll rename this, and we'll just use A once again. And this will be car no, goods. Um, what are we calling this? It's Irving. I'll just use the, the, the town names, I think. Irving to Sioux Falls, as opposed to using a four-letter identifier. I mean, we use the full names on our passenger line, so it fits in. So if we do that, then set up another new line, but this time we're coming from Sioux Falls Exchange, which is a nice name for that, so we won't change that. And where's our drop-off? Here you are. So you are going to slow down the bus that goes down to the port if you're unloading in the buses behind you. It's going to have to wait. But I don't think we can do much about that unless we sent the bus down here, connected this road in. But we'll come back to that in a moment. So let's just name this and we'll just call this the Sioux Falls Cargo Delivery. Sioux Falls Goods Delivery Cargo? Yeah, goods it is. It is goods, it's not cargo. We'll not specify full loads for this one. And we'll just make sure it is just goods that they pick up. So if we were to do that, now as I was saying, we might be able to connect this road into this one. Well, we will be able to. But we might be able to get a better route for our buses where they're not going to trip over any trucks that are unloading at that uh, drop-off point we've just constructed. So if we do that, so the bus hasn't automatically opted to reroute itself. So what we'll do instead is, through the use of waypoints, just there, go back to the line manager, click the visibility icon, the Sioux Falls Ferry Link, what we want it to do, okay, so this is Spruce Street is this one down here. So after, the, yeah, if we get rid of waypoint 14, yeah, you've routed that way, but you're still going to get stuck at that truck stop, potentially. So after waypoint 10, let's send you to this waypoint here, down there, and then you can do, it doesn't matter coming back this way because you're on the opposite side of the street anyway. So that will work. So the next thing we'll do is purchase ourselves a couple of trucks, and we'll just have a quick look at these Isuzu's, but I do think they are worse in terms of cargo capacity than the MANs. So we'd be using the tarpaulin truck, of course. So you carry 14, the tarpaulin carries 17, and the power differential is massive. And the only advantage this one does have is it's reduced emissions, really. Everything else is inferior. So we'll stick with the MAN, and I think we'll start with three of those. Increase their maintenance, put them on the goods delivery line. So that's ready. Now we can hop over to Irving. We do have a hangar at either airport, but we'll use the one at Irving because it's the nearest one to the goods factory. Buy vehicles. We want cargo. And we want goods. So all of these are viable options. We don't want to be using the Junkers. We're a bit, uh, bit beyond that, I think, at this point. Uh, the most advanced one, or the most recent one unlocked, is the Lockheed L100 Hercules. 
That's a large. Has a capacity of 24, split over three compartments. We have the 737-200C, capacity of 20 over two compartments. The Canada CL44, capacity of 27. That's quite impressive. In fact, it's the biggest one yet. And it's not overly expensive when compared to, say, the Lockheed L100. And certainly not one compared to the Boeing. It's only an extra 150,000, give or take. So I think we'll go for a Canada CL44. 400 miles per hour as well, so good at top speed. Don't think they'll be able to achieve that top speed because it's not the longest distance in the world. But that uh, doesn't matter. Assign that to that line. And hopefully what we'll start to see are the goods being brought over to the airport. You should automatically or instantly register a new consumer. Yep, and there we can see that the count is ticking upwards. I don't know if they've been brought over yet. I don't actually know whereabouts they appear on the airport. I guess it would be over here somewhere, maybe out front. We have one. Can anybody spot where it is? Is it these here? Oh, is it? No, it's there. Look, that's it. That must be it. That's it. That's got to be. Yep, it's just a spear. That's the one. Ah, look, the back end opens to uh, to load up. That's that's quite nice. It's quite quite good to see. I like that. So now you're supplying two cities. We will have to keep an eye on this. We might have to set up a dedicated line bringing in the plastic because the one that we use at the moment is this fellow here, which picks up the plastic and then waits for some goods to be generated that it will then take on to Knoxville. So we might want to have a, uh, a dedicated line from here, bring in the plastic, and then this train here would just run from the factory into Knoxville. But this may keep up, we don't know yet. So that's why we're gonna keep an eye on that. So you're loading, you have two of, what is it? I can't remember how much it was, but you have two so far. So the trucks are in position and ready. For a while they are going to be running empty. Do bear in mind, of course, we did instruct this aircraft over here to wait for a full load before it departs. However, this will continue rising. What was it? 107, I believe it was when we checked. That Sioux Falls was requesting per year. No, it's actually dropped off a bit. Must have had some population drop off, but never mind. We have had a, a spike in supply of the machinery, however, that was around 50%. We've now jumped up to 60%, so that's good. So we'll keep an eye on those and see how they end up performing. Don't think they'll be too bad. I don't know if this will make us a great deal of money, if I'm perfectly honest. But given our cash flow situation, even if this is losing us millions per year, we're still going to be very healthy in terms of cash flow. So the other thing we could do quickly is bring in food into Sioux Falls. And like I said, we would just utilize this food processing plan right here. So we may as well do that because it is very quick to arrange a truck delivery system. So let's go ahead. Let's pop this over here just so they don't have to go on these slow dirt roads to pick up. So Sioux Falls sidings. We need to see where we need to drop this off. So let's look now over here on this street right here. Let's put that there. No bus has come down here, so there's no interference there at all. They will just come this way. I dare say we'd want to upgrade that street right there like that and possibly that country road as well like that there we go that's fine so they just run down here with the food drop it off and then head back now as we saw there isn't a very very high demand in terms of quantity for the food so we don't need too much running this line let's give it a name and this is the Sioux Falls food delivery Maybe we'll go for Sioux Falls Food Haulage for this one. So simple as that, that's all we need to do. So let's get some vehicles. Our depot is over here, we'll just use this one. 
Now, as we said, we don't need a lot of food, so I think we might get by with just maybe four. Bearing in mind, they do have to travel a little distance. So if we start with four, tarpaulin trucks, of course. Give them high maintenance, very high maintenance, I should say. Put them on the food haulage line. And again, instantly, we should see this change. Yes, that's jumped up to five. Overall, you actually jumped up quite a bit there. That's now up to 21. That's quite an increase, and we can see our goods has increased as well to 101, so that's now back into triple digits. The food has started to be transferred over to the Sioux Falls sidings. Again, we'll just retain that name. Now, as I said, the fuel, if we wanted to do that, which we might not, we have to set up a new supply chain. We do have a fuel refinery right here. We have an oil well right here. Uh, well, we have that refinery up on the Mesa, but we'd struggle to get up there with a train because of the gradient change. And any other refineries nearby that we could tap into instead? Ah, yeah, there's one right there. So what we could do, because, as we saw, the demand, well, the amount in terms of the demand isn't massive, we might just be able to have a little line, truck line between here and here to transfer some of the crude, sorry, the refined oil over to here. And then we might even get away with a truck line from the fuel refinery running down into Sioux Falls. Extra vehicles being unlocked, AMD SW1500 Southern Pacific locomotives, 65 miles per hour. Uh, the Penn Central F7A at 102 miles per hour. That might be something we want to use, especially with the uh, the power car. We might want to put that on some of our passenger lines, actually. Maybe we'll do that while the other services are currently bedding in. Let's see. Well, you could do with a bit of an upgrade, because you're still running steam, and we are coming up to 1970. Let's manage these, shall we? We'll first do a comparison with two of them. So if we go to diesels, which ones were they? Were they variants of these ones right here? No. No, we have the Delaware and Hudson Loco. I mean, look at that. Well, in fact, it's, it's what, what are we using? Is he, are these the, the Marquette? Uh, there's number 500 unlettered, whatever that is. So while this, well, I suppose the top speed here is being dictated by the, the passenger coaches rather than the locomotive. But as we can see, it's far inferior in terms of its acceleration. What were those trains we just unlocked? I wonder would they be classed under a multi-unit? Hmm. They might come under multi-units. Let's have a look. Is it these ones? What's this one here? How does that work if we put that on? See, that just looks odd, doesn't it? Because you, you can't put anything in the middle of it. So, we don't want... I mean, it's good in terms of its power. But it just doesn't look right. Where are those new fellow? Were they electrics? No. You're probably screaming at the screen at this point, telling me where they are. And I'm just being something of an idiot here and not spotting them. Where are they? Penn Central, that's the one. So the AMD F7 demo units. Okay, just rebrands of those. Right, so let's try with one of these then. So, what was it? The, not the cigar band, the Penn Central. Then the B unit for the Penn Central. Ideally behind the locomotive, of course. So we could do that. Mm. And then maybe if we, it might be a bit expensive double heading or having a tail loco as well. But let's just have a look. Now that gives us nice acceleration yeah so we are bottoming out because of the coaches so let's just replace the coaches as well while we're here passenger 
What do we want? So where these must be the streamlined coach in New Mexico is at 93. These are much of a muchness, even in terms of speed and price. They are much of a muchness. So let's just use them just because why not? And let's send the tail loco to the end. Now let's have a look. So you're now getting up to 102 miles per hour. And you're doing it at a decent lick. However, as we can see on a high gradient, you don't quite match the uh, number 500 unlettered, whatever that happens to be. Hmm, do we want to do it? I mean, it's, it's quite an expensive thing because we've got two locos and two power units just for three coaches. I suppose we could put more coaches in to make it a bit more viable. Like that. And we've still got a, yeah, we're still getting a decent enough speed. But I'm not sure that's going to be worth our while. I'm not sure this line here itself is actually busy enough to warrant it. No. So if we were going to do something like that, we would have to choose a line that is uh, proving to be a bit more popular. What is popular over here in Knoxville? Well, the Knoxville to Norfolk train is very popular. You're using the Alco multi-unit at the moment. And that is topping out at 112. I think the other one was less than 112. What did it for? It was an EMD, wasn't it? Yeah, it was one of these, the EMD demo. Yeah, you, you top out at 102. We've got 117s here. If we were to do, let's just yeah, well, let's compare this, shall we? I take it these are all just reskins, and there's no spec difference. It looks like they are. Let's just use the top one. So if we did that, and then a reverse car as well, like that. See the power rating has increased slightly. Top speed 112 in that's what well, that's 6300 so this it's negligible the difference you start looking at price differences then so i think we'll just ignore those trains that we've unlocked today at least for the time being speaking of the passenger trains those of you who followed the cab ride outro at least to about three quarters of the way through would have noticed that somewhere down here as we were coming in towards Carrollton we hit a stretch of track that was slow speed I think it was this bit here somewhere around here I have now upgraded it to high speed track off camera I think it was this bit right here because we had unnecessary slowdown right there so that's now all been upgraded just in case you, you spotted that and you've pointed it out in the comments I'm recording this not too long after recording the uh, previous episode you see so obviously I haven't had time to see the comments because it's not been processed or uploaded yet but if you did watch it uh, yeah, you can see it has been changed and if you commented it's, it's been done right so I think that's probably where we'll end it today it's been about 30 minutes or so and that's te that tends to be what I'd like to aim for in terms of uh, episode length our our aircraft has taken off. I am quite surprised by that. Can we see it? Oh, it's on its way back in fact. And it made four million. Do we think we're going to need two to run this line? Where are... Have all the... Hmm. Where are all the goods? Oh, it's just calculating them now. But we have nothing over here on the on the uh, the exchange so they must have all been shipped in already how interesting anyways we might want to consider having uh, two aircraft here you've already got 60 waiting at that airport and you only carry around about yeah I think we can duplicate this so let's do that let's duplicate it now and in fact this is what we can uh, have a cab ride or a cockpit ride I suppose would be the technical technically correct term for this one we'll have a cockpit ride on this aircraft because it'll get loaded up pretty quickly because we have a f more than a full load waiting for it and then we'll shoot off over to Sioux Falls 
and chances are we might fly back as well because it's not the greatest distance and we're going pretty much as the crow flies so we're covering the distance we're not having to deal with bends and meanders and curves and tunnels so as soon as this is loaded we'll get on board so what we'll do for now pause the date accelerate to four times the game speed keep an out already on its way that was very quick slow it back down then and we'll get on board there we go so we probably might have to we might end up waiting for the uh, the initial aircraft to land in fact there it is that's a lovely shot isn't it as that aircraft comes into land and as soon as he's landed and taxied out of the way we'll then uh, take to the skies on our way to Sioux Falls and like I said chances are the cab ride will include the return leg as well so I hope you have enjoyed this episode and you continue to enjoy this series as a whole it's still very fun to record and to make and we are getting into the very well not the very modern here but we're getting modern now so as we get modern we're going to get our high speed train which is going to pose its own uh, set of challenges and uh, be something to look forward to it'll be quite interesting we might have to put in some express lines like we did on our previous series if you remember if you watched that one we set up dedicated express lines for the high speed train we might want to do something similar here when it when the time comes of course as always i'm going to take a little moment here to personally thank those patreon supporters whose support and generosity is deeply appreciated your name is on screen thank you very much indeed Anybody wishing to check that out, there is a link in the description of every video, and I obviously leave it to your discretion. Anything at all is deeply appreciated. Thank you very much. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, all that remains for me to say as we soar into the US skies, is as always, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.